the molecules that are left of it at this point and uh, address some of molecules. the molecules. No, bring the horse back. I just found my sidewinder. <laughs> uh, the, the only thing left is like quantum gravioli at this point. Quantum gravioli. <laughs> A particle cloud that was once the whole- And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin Stone, here to LGC Actual, joined every week by our shirty McShirt shirt, Jordan Swang. Good shirt to you, my sir. My ah, shirt. ah, yes, well shirt, <laughs> sir. Well shirt. Um, Pedro Mateus, stay in a place bedtime, as always, and together with you, Shad Realm Dynamic, helping us form cocaine voltron man did we get up to anything this week shirt i i mean i i got taken off of a hanger and put on a body that's that's oh. what i did no, no i i mean it's, it's it's the first week off after being off my job so i slept a bunch i tried i tried reading on this couch over there and the problem is that it's way too comfortable because every time i try to sit down and read a book i fall asleep ah uh, it's gonna ask <laughs> you like how long did that take <laughs> oh, it's, that, that, that couch is way too comfortable. It's, it's fucking me up. This is like one of my problems <laughs> when listening to the um, books. Like I have no, like I, I've missed like four or five hours, like segments, and I'm not going back if I can kind of make out what's going on. So I have a very disjointed version of what's going on in the Drizzle series. <laughs> yeah. I filled in some holes. I'm like, ah, right, right, right. Yeah, right right now I'm reading uh, The Falcon and the Sword by Saladin Ahmed, and it's okay. Um, like I, it hasn't gotten into like the meat of the book yet, but like the dialogue is a little rough because mm. it takes, it takes place, it takes place in like a 1001 Arabian nights type setting okay. and everyone's like, Oh, beneficent God, this, Oh, God's balls, this everyone's talking about God, every other third word. And it's a little annoying, but how okay. about you, Pedro? <laughs> you, do you have any fresh cowboys? Uh, not really. No, uh, I, um, this week was very very busy at work it seems like it's becoming a bit of a habit uh so yeah it, my free time was spent um futzing around with the netbook and i removed fedora because dnf was pissing me off it's so slow on like this one gigahertz dual core uh amd processor it's so slow. And I I had to to you should have just installed Snaps. I'm, so, 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 act, <laughs> well, so, I didn't so install Pedro, Ubuntu Mate. So, <laughs> is, is 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 Zipper slower? I don't know because uh, I, I know I know uh, some of the Lib- they're both based off of uh, LibResolve, but I know I know DNF can be a, a little chunky. It is, and uh, I had uh, on the single core version of this netbook that I used to have, uh, I had Fedora installed on it, and Yum was significantly faster. So yeah, no DNF is uh, not I'm good. I'm not on lower end I'm hardware a, anymore. <laughs> I guess lower end hardware is thing because like on my, on, yes. I have a single core server um, that's running like the 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 bridges and whatnot for IRC and whatnot, and like DNF is reasonably fast on that, and that's only a single core thing. But that's also like on yes, a, how many gigahertz of the single core? <laughs> One. I don't, I don't know. It's it's on like an AMD Epic like. <laughs> 32 core right. so like yeah. yeah see this is an amd uh what is it sounds like it uh, sounds like you need to download some more ram uh, uh, two rams <laughs> <laughs> i don't remember the exact family but it's the c60 so yeah uh one gigahertz dual core that's right. it <laughs> that's Man. more than enough well uh I got a battle I got to play out. I mean, after I finished uh, redecorating my hallway earlier this week, um, tune in for the pre-pre super shows. And if you want more deets on that, uh, got a new interface in. So an incredibly good deal at Guitar Center. And I do a little series called Interfacing Linux because I'm trying to get this stuff cataloged, like whether or not you can or cannot use it. It showed up and it was the wrong thing, really close to the right thing, but still the wrong thing. So I, I, I get to look forward to negotiating over the phone. I'm like, Cut me a deal because they don't know I. It's FireWire only. The one I was going to get was going to be USB. They don't know I have FireWire cards for days. Like, they hey, do now. No, they don't. They don't listen to this. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> or so, or oh, so hey, you How you doing? Oh, yeah, right. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so I was listening to the show last night. Apparently, you got FireWire. We're not going to exchange this for you. 
Uh, oh, they're going to exchange it because they sent me the wrong thing. What I was supposed to get was a Moto MK3 A28 hybrid, and they sent me a Moto A28 MK3 Firewire. So one of them what, what, has what, what a makes USB it a hybrid? port on the back. That's USB right. on the back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the difference? This, yes. This is the, okay. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> that is the difference. I, uh, when it's like hybrid, I'm expecting like, oh, yeah, it's like half USB, half no, I, it, I don't know. Cheetah. It, no, it, it's um, it's like half uh, audio interface, half paring knife. Ooh, can, yeah. can you use it for like a cheese plate or something? No, without that USB port. Oh, yeah, man, that, that USB cheese. That's, yes. <laughs> it's a rough customer. <laughs> I, I kind of wish we could get um, a USB port on the horse, man, because the fire wires, it's outdated. It's a dead technology. Uh, the best I can do for you is game port. <laughs> game it's got a... <laughs> Yeah, I, I crammed an old sound card in the horse, and it yeah, seems baby. to be running okay. Retro it's horse. The Steam. <laughs> yeah, Steam. Let us update. update. Oh my God, E three, it's happening. Except no one's really going there because pandemic. But Didn't you know have, what? Like, That's an not issue gonna... with the E three stream. I was watching a couple of people on Twitch just streaming. Like, no, we have to use this alternate stream that it's not like laced with didn't... copyrighted music. Oof, I, I didn't catch any of that. Um, but yeah, uh, so the PC gaming show is happening this Sunday. We are recording this on Saturday. So everything we say is going to be wrong. It's going to be live streamed on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Steam, TikTok. Apparently, Ven Stone is a streaming service now. I assume it has to do with like <laughs> well, reflecting. <just> Ven. <laughs> I, I assume it has to do with reflecting data streams off of like Ven's incredibly reflective body. I'm highly um, reflective. I can be put outside your card and stuff like those go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we get a we get a little itinerary of stuff that's going to be discussed in the 45 minute rock block. We get the so the, the big thing is, oh, Valve is Valve is doing a, a little um, not necessarily a presentation because it says that there is announced an announcement regarding the Steam Next Fest. So this is this is just the announcement of the announcement of the announcement. Mm. I, but uh, there, there's uh, th- there's a couple things listed here. I, I wrote down some guesses in the show notes. Um, are we, I think we're not going to get a dying light two port of Lin on Linux. We got dying light the first, but I don't think we're going to get number two. We might. And I think Eve online is finally going to migrate to Excel 2017. Uh, everyone's going to hit it if they do, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, the steam next fest. I'm going to guess it's the, um, it's the next sale. That's literally all that, they're that's going to got. announce because this is Valve. <laughs> oh, man, okay, I'm I'm thinking possibly, I guess hopefully, you know, because we heard a little buzz from Gaben earlier, you know, like breathe something like, ooh, we'll never expect work to <laughs> the Steam Pie or something about that or something about the announcement that's going to be something about that. I don't know. I'm not going to get too on them, but maybe we'll get Steam 2, episode 1. I mean, it'll still probably no, be more never feature gonna complete release than a 64 bit client. <laughs> it's going to be more feature complete than the Epic Game Store, anyways. So, the laughs in Mac OS. <laughs> yeah, they released it for Mac, and then Apple's like, yeah, we're ditching the architecture. I'm sure Valve are terribly happy about that. Yes. No, yeah. well, well, Valve could be like, oh, so that's how that feels. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not like Valve is making any money from Mac sales, anyways. Right. Okay. Uh, quick client update for this team yes very very quick uh nothing uh special was released in the june 7th uh beta update uh, the there's no linux specific stuff and they had to re-release it because there were a couple of bugs with the mac version and uh, a couple of bugs preventing upload of games uh, statistics occasional crashes on startup and uh, causing some values in the server browser to show up as negative just odd typical stuff but uh the one thing that i noticed if you have like a uh, dual sense or a dual shock and you have this little touchpad up here that uh if you bound a button to just a tap of that and you hit it repeatedly sometimes it just wouldn't register it would register to once and that's it that's supposedly been fixed i haven't been able to test it because honestly i forget that it's there hmm <laughs> Isn't that kind of I guess, yeah. Uh, <laughs> dude, the thing that jacks me up is, is like when something is bound to like the press down on the analogs. Like, oh, stop yeah. doing that because when you're 
busy and you button mashing that gets mashed and it's always something dumb like oh take a picture I'm like ah i'm in the or I'm about to fall in crouch room. crouch crouch is the other one it's like i'm trying to move no i'm no i'm nope. low now i'm all the deads now <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about proton experimental because there's a little bit of an update to that that i have questions about yes and uh pierre luke griffet uh plug on twitter Yes, uh, uh, posted the thing to say, latest Proton Experimental it contains it but latency improvements, especially for V-Sync games or GPU bound games running below 60 FPS. The changes affect how the frames are timed at a pretty low level, so they need lots of testing uh, to make sure that there are no weird regressions, which is good, which is very good. And uh, if you ask about the one thing that uh, had people when uh, what was it counter-strike go came out on linux a lot of people were like did the input latency is shit fix this it's not as bad anymore but it yeah it was noticeably bad so i'm glad that they're addressing it in uh in proton as well that's that's very nice to see <laughs> yeah I, c- I can see this being like really useful for like uh fighting games or platformer games that are like uh especially online fighting yes. games where it's all it's all frame locked so uh make, making sure that you know your your punches and blocks get registered at the appropriate time or if you need like sub pixel accuracy on a platformer this this is where mm-hmm. these kinds of things will be really handy if you're running vsync hmm. yeah uh how does that even work man how does like vsync affect my like controller input with like latency i don't know oh that uh, oh imagine- that's clear thanks <laughs> imagine you have uh, like a line of frames that are going to be displayed on screen whenever it refreshes that's what vsync does it makes sure that there is a contiguous I frame how v-sync ready works, to go that's not an apt yes. analogy because that would be like the scan lines from a crt uh, except it's the whole panel but yes <laughs> uh, and you have that and you have those frames going at a time the gpu will send the frame when it's ready and the screen will only display one frame per refresh rate so if you have a 60 hertz monitor you will get one frame every 16.7 milliseconds ish and let's say between frames one and two you moved your mouse frame three isn't going to reflect that it's only going to reflect that uh, a few frames later when the GPU finally sends the frame with the updated input. That's the input latency. The best way that you can actually see that happening is in shooters. Uh, Quake 3, for example, we played that last week. Oh, boomer uh, shooters. Yes, boomer shooters are a very good example because if you're playing, even if you only have a 60 hertz display, but the game is rendering at 300 FPS, the display is going to show the most recent frame. So even if you get a little bit of micro stuttering, you will at least see the update on the movement that you made, the input that you sent. If you're rendering at 60, there's going to be a delay before it finally shows up. What if I have variable refresh rates? It, then you're not affected by this. That, this is specifically now? for fixed refresh rates. <laughs> Have you seen what it costs to buy a G-Sync monitor, man? Come on, man. <laughs> Everything has free sync, to be fair, but it's like between no, yeah, 40 no. and yeah. 60. <laughs> I, 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 th- I think it's like pl- it's like plus minus 60 to like normalize it, essentially. But yeah. yeah. Listen, if I push a button, it does the thing. I'm done. I'm, I've never yeah, been. Yeah, it's the time between you pushing the button and it showing on screen, which, uh, you know, Pedro ideally Mateus, you're dealing. I'm patient. I can wait. I can go make sense. <laughs> That's, that's why, that's why he plays games on a 46. Less than 50 milliseconds of latency between you pushing the thing and the thing happening on screen. More than that, and you're going to notice it. 50 milliseconds. <laughs> is, is, is that what you were complaining about last week? Yes. Except instead of 50 milliseconds, it was 200 milliseconds. <laughs> if you want to wind Pedro up like non-ironically, <laughs> I, I'm saying this not to irritate you, Pedro. I'm saying this it is the most adorable damn thing that I've witnessed in a while. Pedro, Pedro, I'll be quick. <laughs> I got annoyed because I was shooting at people. It's like, I see the blood effects on my screen and they're not mm-hmm. dying, which means I'm not hitting them. <laughs> All right. That's right. I have over 200 ping. So Jordan <laughs> pulled up a quick three server in Britannia. I think he technically did. it's in Germany now. That. Well, in, in, in Europe, so we could yeah, play in, the in game Eurozone. without the yeah. constant stream of like, I just, no. 
Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> go, go back and watch that. It was, like, it was endearingly sweet. <laughs> Unintentionally endearingly sweet, but it was. Yeah. All right. Um, Proton, you version of this. Oh, oh, a couple of versions. Yeah. A couple of whoops. G- whoops. Yeah, GE. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you, you know the thing about gl- the Gloria Egg Roll releases. It's we're, we're trying we're trying to like hammer the round peg through the square hole, making all those Proton patches and all the wine uh, work with upstream wine. So this uh, w- uh, wine 610 got uh, released last week, I believe. And so this week we got a GE 610, which has a bunch of these patches. Um, there's uh, fixes for Necromunda, for Guilty Gear, Horizon Zero Dawn, Far Cry, et cetera, et cetera. There's some uh, there's a couple problems because, you know, when you iterate software quickly, you uncover issues that may or may not be like immediately apparent. So uh, there are a couple of hot fixes for GE uh, 610.1.0. And uh, I guess that's out. So. Uh, one, one thing, and I got, I haven't tried it yet. I was having some like weird input problems with mass effect, like legendary edition. It was just like, not, it was dropping mouse inputs and whatnot. Um, so I need to update to this version and check it out. Although I did find, I did find some forum posts are like, yeah, the, you, the aim assist you can't disable is always on. So what you need to do is replace the input DLL with this one that you can download from my Dropbox, which is totally legit. You guys. Oh, like, oh. oh. this is yeah. like the old days of wine too. Man. Like you yeah. find that like in the GitHub post, like, Ooh, somebody's got to do that with Bayonetta way back, way, way back. So, now imagine if you were like the executive v- VP of Blizzard, okay? Uh-huh. Imagine if you will. And, um, you know, a company that has always been nothing but open and embracing of Linux community and gaming. Except for all the times that they ban people. Pedro. Unrightfully. That's, that's, that's the joke. I, I, I am autistic and I understand that that is the joke. What's, what's, I'm just what's saying it's happened more than twice See, the delightful thing about that is I was setting up a joke. These two were like, fuck, no, you're not. Mm. <laughs> we can walk all over it. Um, so absolutely, absolutely. Tell you exactly what went down, man. Uh, Mike, I want to call him Yabra, but it's not. It's Yabra. Ibarra. Ibarra. Yeah, Ibarra. I want to call him Hotel Yabra. That's his name now. Um, Welcome to the Hotel California. <laughs> so you might notice if you're watching the video version of this, that we're on the way back machine because guess what, kids? This tweet got deleted. I'll tell you why in a second. So he wrote, what OS no, do you use for gaming? Twitter bowl. Log in with official client vote. Yeah, easy enough. And he brought this up, seeing the NVIDIA supporting DLSS. That got a lot of coverage last week, more than I would think from like outlets that I've never seen covering Linux, gaming, anything. But he writes that NVIDIA supporting DLSS on Linux makes me wonder how many people use it. Wow. Um, He didn't like the results of that, Pedro. No, no, he did not, because uh, if you were paying attention to the poll, like for the first couple of days, it was uh, Mac was at 3%, and then Linux was 2%, and 4%, and then it kind of jumped to 30%, which was, <laughs> I guess that was the trigger that went, uh, I'm going to just delete this now before someone sees it. And <laughs> And, and then he came up with fu- a bullshit excuse. How how dare you, Pedro? No, you will not besmirch. You will not bes- besmirch Mike like that. Okay, listen. Mike has a perfectly valid reason. He's like, yo, uh, who wrote? Uh, Michael wrote. Um, I feel like I'm pointing at the obvious here. Things don't understand, but Linux, according to Steam hardware survey. Okay, that's fine. But this was to a deleted tweet. Uh, Mike came back. He's like, yeah, the Steam data is what I've found you just found you had no idea that was there okay uh so he deleted his post and uh because steam is an accurate articulation versus my post going on forums and people asking other people to vote one thing up like moral, that, that, moral, that. moral of the fucking story kids is if you don't like the results swap out the data set and and like <laughs> the, the the entire thing here oh no a forum got a hold of this poll and they all voted and it's Still a thousand people responding to your poll way above the Mac gamers. Like, that's not to say that, like, if we actually look at the numbers, I don't know what the actual um, the actual real world numbers between Mac and Linux gamers are. But the point is that the market segment exists and that they're willing to engage and they're willing to spend money, which is what you want as a business that sells electronic entertainment products. Mm -hmm. Right. 
it's not it's not nothing. It is a market segment that is at least worth acknowledging, if at least not worth courting. So right. now yes, I, here's my real question about all of this. What what do you think was his intention of making the post with with that tweet with a poll? Was was the thought behind that of like LOL will see Windows crush everything? Maybe a couple of Mac people, nobody on Linux. <laughs> I, uh, the confirmation bias was certainly a part of it. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I think so. I, I think also it's like he had he had an expected result in his mind, and then when it started going the other way. It's like, oh no, my my assumptions have been challenged. Instead of being good VP, I won't be able to and, use this to prove a point uh, yeah, in the future. And, so let's and, just get rid and, of it. And, well, and and that's the thing. The the obvious move is as the VP of marketing, being like, okay, well, how do I court you guys? You guys are clearly engaging with me. How do I get that extra thousand sales? Because at eighty bucks a pop, that's still another like eighty thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. But no, this is Blizzard. They'd rather ban Linux people who legitimately buy their games and do their best to try and play their games while following their rules and they get banned for having the audacity of using Linux. Because you, and, get, you uh, have to delete two polls. Yeah, and then... Be, be, uh, well, oh, yeah, Pedro, we'll, we'll... It's because of that end-user license agreement that you signed. It means that we can do whatever the fuck we want after we have your $60. Yeah, you th not... that, that is a part of every end-user license agreement. They could terminate your account at any point for any reason without having to justify it, so... <laughs> but yeah, no, having Blizzard trust the Valve numbers, you know, a competitor's numbers based on random attribution surveys, because let's face it, the Steam survey is shit, uh, <laughs> rather than one that you have full control over because you posted it on Twitter, it was yours. Case in point, you deleted it. So you're trusting Valve's numbers that you probably don't really know how they got. Well. I mean, well, I, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> it's, Valve it's, knows the real numbers, even at oh, like, Valve really, knows the real numbers. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the, the news. The story, the meat of this is you deleted the tweet like this would have never we probably mm -hmm. wouldn't even mentioned it like, hey, look, we got 30 percent. Yay. Uh, as opposed to like, what, what are you scared of? Mike? Hmm? Penguins. Sexy oh, penguins. no. So I, I've heard people asking me hey, clamoring for a game where you could play as Jubilee in a 2D version of Mirror's Edge. And lo and behold, lo and behold, Coughing Dragon, the publisher from J.P. Van Oste, who was the developer, they got you covered. Here it is, kids. We're talking about Blue Rabbit. And uh, it's best I can make out of it from its 2D platformer. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, it looks a lot 2D. like the, uh, the, the, the old, the, if you remember the Blues Brothers uh, platformer, no. the background looks exactly like that game. Uh, oh, Blue what? Violet. Oh, okay. I see uh, what they're doing. One, one, one thing they do bring up in the thing is apparently it's a bit of a Metroidvania as well because you have to you have to deliver packages from one side of a map to another. So there's a big uh, exploration aspect, which okay. is cool. Um, you don't you don't see a lot of Metroidvanias like really emphasize the exploration side of things. And it's something at least oh, it's worth spider exploring. Man. I, it's, it's We're bionic bionic man. Man. Spider, Spider, <laughs> spider Bionic Commando. I think I think I think Spider Man for the Atari predates Bionic Commando. <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's only suggestions of drug use, and that's not enough for me. I need like that's hardcore quite drug use, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The suggestions part. We should be able to do some drugs. Uh, it's ten percent. Hey, yeah, another you know platformer what? on Linux. Good times. <laughs> you know what? It looks like art style. It's well done. Well done enough. Four forty nine. Four ninety nine regularly. And oh, it's only five dollars. Okay. Yeah. All right. That yeah. that's palatable. Yeah. As long as you have a copy of Ubuntu sixteen. Yes. Which one though? It's the sixteenth <laughs> release of Ubuntu. Pedro, it says it right there. Okay, so Ubuntu 16, so that's 8, 10? That's that many. <laughs> let's, let's, let's make Pedro do more math on stream. I'm a fan of this. <laughs> did, right. did you study for your math test, Pedro? You forgot your pants. So a little while ago, Team Cherry, um, we're, we're, they were taking a break working on Silk Song to do an update. Kind of an unexpected additional Hollow Knight update. And I only say unexpected because, like, what more can you add to this game? And I say it <laughs> only because they've added so much post-launch. They've learned earned a lot of love from the community. 
They had like four full games to the main game. It's pretty crazy. much. Yeah, it's a completely different game. Like I, st- I, I was able to put that uh, drug down because after the last update, uh, there was a Vulcan render introduced in the um, beta category and mm-hmm. tried it. I'm like, ooh, I'm like, oh man, I'd have to start from the very beginning, which I did. And like six hours later, I was like, let's not install that because <laughs> I didn't want to go through it. Well, I did, and that was the problem. You start getting the, the itchy collar. You can give some of that. Holiday. Vulcan has made it to the stable build for Linux. Also, 64 bit is now required, but you can still use version 1432. Um, if you got a 32 bit PC, which apparently you can run all on a 32 bit PC, that's nice. Controllers now rumble. That's also a thing. And there's less screen tearing when you get the shakes. And, you know, just a couple other, like, okay. Little fixes. Nothing crazy. Where's Silk Song? Hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, I can imagine a lot of this is just like, hey, they updated to the latest version of Unity. Vulcan stuff has finished its validation testing. Mm. Um, so on and so forth. And yeah, like all, all the, there all the game few, balance stuff. There all, is all a of bug them. with Vulcan um, in the Unity game engine. Which, With the, the compositor thing, right? Yeah, if you don't have a compositor enabled, you you get between zero and like 5,000 frames per second. It's Ooh. expecting a GLX context and it's not finding one. <laughs> <laughs> Unity. Unity. <laughs> well, you know, but, you know what? Uh, I mean, the thing uh, that I noticed was the rumble. Why is the rumble only for the Xbox One controller on Windows? Was that the only one that the team had at hand to test this? Do you guys need I, more I, controllers? It <laughs> shows you that they're not using SDL2 because otherwise Rumble would be working on fucking it's everything. Unity. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they could be using the uh, wire. Re- rewired, yeah. Rewire, yeah. I take care of it. I'm, I'm guessing they didn't. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like, to, to be fair, I don't think they really need it. Input in Hollow Knight is pretty fucking spot on. It, oh, it, that was tight. It's it, extremely that tight. That was very Hollow tight. Knight was one of the first games on Linux that came out well, my, probably on Unity as well. I'm like, whoa, you can do a precision platformer correctly. Seriously, no fucking around. And, uh, but hey, you know what? I, I'm glad they put the rumble in the notes. I always think that should be first because there's nothing like coming back to a game that you know doesn't do that nonsense. And, and then, you, you just, <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> so, sounds like you need to eat more, more vegetables. Spooky. No, man. No, I'm Linux grass is it'll mess my figure up too much. Linux I mean, grass. speaking of well, no, games and crap. Yeah. <laughs> so pocket cars, uh, they have a new version out. It's version not zero or, or uh, not uh, some seven. They added some new tracks uh, and they add, they've they're, they're working on some rendering stuff. Apparently, apparently uh, you can use the new grass textures under Linux now. But if you want the veggies, you got to you got to finish your grass before you can eat your veggies. Um, also, one thing I do notice in, in the main page, they tell you, you got to use Feral's game mode for this, a.k.a. set your governor perf- to performance for best results. Mm. Yeah. And it launches the process with high priority uh, if your kernel cares about that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, the, there's three new levels and one arena, but they're just new reconfigurations of the pre-existing areas that the game already had you have the harbor the street uh, the western and i think that's it i might be missing one but i, I think those mm. are the three. Oh, no, the museum the, i yes, forgot about yes, the museum that one map yes. we were like hey okay <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have those four, and you have three new tracks uh, on three of them, and one new arena for you to either do the stunts thing or to just practice around. Mm-hmm. And the grass is only visible on the neighborhood, like streets uh, type of map. And I took a screenshot. It's like that. That okay. That there's grass there now, but <laughs> there's other issues with this game, namely the fact that it freezes for like a second. Uh, while live a race because it decided, oh, wait, wait a second, I forgot to load something, and it freezes the game, and then it continues. And it was during one of those freezes that I took that screenshot. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> There's the grass. <laughs> it, it, it looks like grass. I don't know, man. Um, this is one of those games that I've definitely been keeping an eye on simply because it has the potential. It, it could be the new revolt. Do you, 
Well, they, because Revolt is awesome. They, <laughs> they got they got they got point three three more updates to go until the, to fix this. So, I mean, <laughs> this is uh, I mean having you know Linux compatible grass. I'm happy to see that they still need to add bots for the multiplayer. Mm-hmm. They they just do because Pedro and I we played it and that was like one of the very unfortunate things when you're playing with a forever alone plus one mode and a racing game you only have each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, it starts to get a little personal. Not really, because <laughs> yes. you get, well, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pedro, though. Um, that's, it's me I playing mean, video games. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not. That, that's what, that's you what, what we should I mean? put on his gravestone. It's Pedro, though. <laughs> it's Pedro. No, we'll just put a sign next it to it. It was. Uh, I mean, you mean the urn, but Okay. Past tense, Pedro. All right. Coming up next, we have some exciting new uh, developments from Wine HQ and the Smach is dead. Again, long live the Smach. And it's about time we uh, put away the horse or the molecules that are left of it at this point and uh, address some of the molecules. No, bring the horse back. I just found my sidewinder. (laughs) <laughs> uh, the, the only thing left is like quantum gravioli at this point quantum gravioli a, a particle cloud that was once the horse i don't know i still it's from gravitational Futurama. ravioli gravioli <laughs> gravioli yeah well, gravioli geez. look forward to that show title um <laughs> If you if you want to fund our quantum physics research, where we take we we have a particle accelerator, but it's just a long tunnel where uh, Pedro and I put helmets on, and then we just like charge at each other head first. Yeah, and we try to like <laughs> that's our particle accelerator. No man, uh, See, start- I told you not to put that hard left turn in it. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> There's also some random drops for no reason. Right. <laughs> it's like a Super Mario level. <laughs> Listen, man, if those particles, they'll learn. We're just trying to find out. Uh-huh. Indeed. So if if this seems like an avenue of science you would like to explore, head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. We're always looking for new funding sources for our quote unquote experiments. And you get something in return, science. too. You can get ac- yeah, you get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get by subscribing to us on Twitch. So don't forget to do that. Uh, a little bit more money and you get access to our show notes, a video version of the pre pre super shows and uh, even the ability to issue corrections, add stories to our notes. And if you want, you can buy your way on the show. Boom. Yeah. God, God, God doesn't want you to do that. You heard him. You heard no, him right there. Thor God doesn't want you to about our show. Fuck him. He's like, show harder. <laughs> Fuck God. There was Hail somebody Satan. who was thinking about not subscribing. Give us money. He's like, this is, yeah. This is a good way to get rid um, of Hey, speaking wait, wait, of that, we got t-shirts, all this other fun stuff. Yeah. Put merch, LGC, all over your face, chest, and neck. We got masks. We got cups. We got stickers. We got hoodies. We got more stickers. I think we got some We got more t-shirts. Bags. Yes. A tote. Blinky. Totes. You can make a mask out of the stickers. You Don't can use Frank's sack. To carry all your yes. sundry goods. <laughs> yes, that's the uh, one piece of merch that I've gotten some use of. That's my Whole Foods. Uh, the, the, the Frank sack? Yes, that's why I made it. Because I'm like, wait a minute, I just make shit to fuck with people. All right, done. <laughs> Hasht- <laughs> hashtag Frank sack. <laughs> not, not one mention, unfortunately. With a, um, I, I thought somebody, I'd get a nibble. But none of the hippies want to go with It's me. just a skeleton, so yeah. Well, it, it's yeah. Francophile. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they think you're really into French skeletons. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we, we, we got wish zones. Uh, if you head on over to LinuxGamecast.com, move your mouse over the support button. You can see the links to our various wish zones. If you want to buy us some stuff, help us build out our respective studios. Great. We appreciate it a lot. You can give us a note that we have to read for you. Nothing too crazy, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll within reason, we'll read it. And if you if you want to see what's in our studio, but this well. get us better mm-hmm. off Twitch, basically. Yeah, and if you want, if you want to see what we're running, you can look at that as well. If you buy Venn stuff, no, that's not Venn. That's Venn. Uh, <laughs> then you can get your name on the blinky wall behind him. You know what? Uh, that's a horrible idea, and you will be publicly shamed. I just realized that uh, Rohit was like, "Hey, man, do you know what I found out? Giraffes love Linux Gamecast. This is um, <laughs> it's not something that we're allowed to say." 
as you know as, pe- as people on twitch yes no. <laughs> this, is, this is the last episode when something when something uh wrongful advertising no man I, we can, what i'm saying is that legally we cannot <laughs> confirm nor deny that um our t-shirts we're all giraffe attract we're giraffes all- Yes, or, or that we are not drafting to do with the suits. lotus. <laughs> Consider it a warning and also an explanation for the giraffe in your living room. Yes, <laughs> giraffes vibrate through walls, man. You got to watch out. I'm just saying. Thanks for letting us do this, people. Uh, stick around for your name in the credits, and uh, yeah, Calabras yeah. got some stuff. They're up to some. They just they're just well, like alchemy they people do. now at this point. Yes, when I, I, I see mean, a like this post, point. I'm like, what bullshit are you up to this week, kids? Yeah, th- I mean, th- this is what happens when you have a bunch of industry. Like, here, have some money. Go f- figure out some fucky shit. To do. Live a little. Right? Yep. Yeah. That Valve money is actually going to places that we, as people who play video games on Linux, very much enjoy. Uh, this. Uh, it comes from Alexandros Francis, and he's talking about uh, the uh, native wine rendering in Wayland. So you got wine on Wayland, W on W. Not wow. going to go there. The what, Tommy Wayland. <laughs> but yeah, it's the Owen Wilson. Um, <laughs> the big one here is yeah the native uh, Wayland. Uh, you if you have your Wayland, oh, it's beautiful compositors uh and you have say a game that likes to for a game like american truck simulator or euro truck simulator that you can actually just span it across all the monitors and have actually everything be the viewport into the game that's awesome and that was something that you know you can really do in well and until now uh especially not through why and so yeah they're uh, in the effort to try and get rid of the um reliance on the X compatibility layer for Wayland. Here we go. And th- this is, this will make, uh, as I'm assuming Proton will inherit this at some point. So it will make some Proton games very, very interesting for multi-monitor play. I yeah, just this realized is, this I mean, video is like <laughs> seven minutes long. I'm like, geez, we need yeah. to <laughs> I mean, you gotta show off all the features of the, the dragon resizing. I mean, like, here's, here's the thing though. Th- this is crucial work because likely this is yes. going to be required if you want to, if you don't want to have your highlight kind of struggle is not the game I want it to be. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah. But if, if you don't want your game, your old game performance constrained by X Wayland, you're going to pretty much need to do this. I'm looking at you every single unity title out there currently. Um, Cause yeah, th- those aren't, those aren't getting rebuilt with the latest version of unity that will support this. Yeah. Or nah, <laughs> at all. Nope. So uh, this is this is super important preservation work. It's another step in ditching X entirely, so that we can move on to mm-hmm. the brave new Wayland Moon future. I'm looking forward. Yeah, to. basically just to recap, man, what the work done is the Vulcan, like Pedro said, the multi monitor, high DPI. That's going to be that being able to just have it and it works. You don't have to butt with it. You don't have to set scaling yeah. or anything. <laughs> to having X it run across monitors native. too. Exactly. <laughs> you know, being able to expose the multi monitors and one being able to pick that up. I mean, this is what you're going to be dealing with in the future. I mean, we're not saying the future is tomorrow, but it's, yeah, what Jordan said, it's, this has to be there or bye bye. We're stuck on X forever. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> I have to keep playing on my oscilloscope. Indeed. <laughs> but we, we got we to gotta pour one out. We got to pour one out for our homie. Project no. situation <laughs> update. You know that's good news, right? When you have situation in your update. Yes, yes, I'm talking about... I know you're upset you didn't get yours. Calm down. Um, God damn it, God. I'm just saying, man. Everyone's <laughs> a little bit upset. So, yeah, this is... Hey, let's blame everybody but ourselves. And uh, during the assembling, you know, they found the battery problem of the 200 units. at somehow like every million dollars... 2.5 million stimulus, uh, multiple rounds of backing, investors, and but here's the one that really threw me off. It is. Uh, we're providing you with a link for any of you who have purchased a Smack Z device post uh, all refund inquiries you may have. We cannot promise you anything. This link <laughs> will be available for the next four weeks. Um, but yeah, yeah, what what they're saying is if they flip the couch upside down and they manage to shake like some bus fare loop loose, you might get some of that. You might get like a penny. But I, I think no, a lot of this it's is only the people do, do, that 
<laughs> it's only going to be the people that have, you know, lawyers contact them and they go, oh, yeah, we better give that person their money back. Everyone else is I, just going to get. No, Pedro. Yeah. Pedro, they you, posted you, you a there's link. Gonna, no. <laughs> you figure there's going to be a class action, though? I think so. Uh, not enough people uh, mm-hmm. back the campaign no. for that to be mm-hmm. viable. No. <laughs> Unless there's a lawyer that's uh, really... I mean, really personally the, affected by it and is willing to do it for very little to I mean, no what, 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 what's that what's that phrase squeezing blood from a stone like at some point there's nothing left <laughs> good luck beating that horse no that was the same segment <laughs> so if you're unfamiliar you've involved with the saga on uh, the smash is that originally the steam boy um like what eight years ago seven years ago something like that they were out and they're like hey yeah. we're gonna make a portable pc gaming thing that you can carry around a la you know this is before the switch came out switches already came out and it's gonna run x86 it originally was like it's gonna do Linux, but later on they okay it's gonna do windows and you can be able to play your games it's gonna be brilliant Everyone said this thing was vaporware uh, for a long time, because especially when they were showing their demo unit, which was basically just a hollow puck with the uh, HDMI cable running out. And uh, then a couple of years back, they cobbled together some prototypes that they'd sent to one or two people to play with for a few minutes. And then they had the latest thing last year before COVID went down was, uh, oh, the injection molding wasn't good. And now they're blaming it. There's just, just a train of fucking excuses the established pattern of behavior over almost an entire decade which has led to when are you guys just going to say we never really made anything <laughs> thanks bye they spent the money <laughs> yeah yeah well, they spent the money and not on the thing that they were supposed to uh do so but this is the yeah. old thing here's the whole thing when they're like we're out of money. I'm like, oh, so where was your money for the logistics for shipping these things to customers and all the other fun stuff? <sighs> hmm. You weren't supposed to ask that question. Um, oh, we were going we to charge people extra. I was oh, going to be like, oh, we know, we know you paid for shipping, but we're going to. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of necessary, right? Like these failures are informative. They're going to hopefully, hopefully whatever rises out of the ashes of this mm-hmm. mock. I, I don't think it's going to be the same team, but it's definitely going to be people who watched this said, this is the thing that I want. Uh, but maybe we can learn some lessons and next time bring it into reality. But it's absolutely. Well, here's the thing, though. Um, one, it had that chilling effect uh, for a minute, but it's been such a long time since this thing was announced. We've had uh, the new GDP win type thing. Then we get the INDO, yeah, the, the, which is yeah. what this was supposed to be, except better in every yep. possible way and cheaper. I, well, and I don't <laughs> and I don't think the INDO and the other one would even exist if this was not such a heaping trash fire that created a- the GPD already existed uh, yeah, to a certain yeah, degree. Like- they had the GPD, the original GPD win, which was effectively a controller with a very, very yeah, but, so, but <laughs> cer- 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 uh, certainly, certainly the <laughs> INEO though, certainly the INEO though. That, oh, yeah. one, that, definitely- that one was what- clearly, <laughs> but it does yeah. work. It has that. It's yeah. a real product and it's something that's going to ship in mass. So, and, just to be perfect, none of us take any joy from this whatsoever. This is not doing Even any type VCS of happiness. Even the at this point uh, R- is R- actually R- announced R- a, an actual release date for the Atari VCS. I, I, I was hopeful for this, too, because like they were at the very beginning, they're announcing, like, yeah, the, the controller's modular. You can like swap out the buttons for like N64 buttons and GameCube buttons and stuff. And uh, all, all, all those hopes and dreams in the toilet. Mm. Lush down. Dead. <laughs> But tomorrow, Valve will walk out and be like, uh, Steam Pie. Maybe. We're, 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 <laughs> we're going to announce Steam Pie in a couple of months. We're going to announce but, that we're going to announce it. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, Do you think be, better than that is... Can I play Steam on my M1? Can I play with video games? Well, you can play some GameCube games on your M1. Oh. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, DolphinEmo.com. They're a uh, mega progress report. We cover these periodically because they're real interesting. These guys have gone so far as to recreate entire GPUs in Vulkan to get the uh, to get their emulator more accurate. So uh, a lot of what is in this update report has to do with um, the new Apple Silicon, the M1. And I got to say... These numbers are pretty impressive. I mean, they're they're comparing it to like some ultralight, like heavily crippled i7, but that's still pretty damn good. I really just want like 
Asahi Linux man, Hector, come on, get that GPU working. I, I, I want to play with it a little bit. Just give, give, give me a little something. Um, but you know, we did we do the the old Control F Linux game, and nothing really came up. A lot of this has to do with a lot of the H- AR64 improvements to get stuff working on the M1. Lots of bug fixes. One thing they did uh, manage to do that piques my interest is they got the Game Boy Advance. Uh, cart loader thing working so you can play your emulated pokemon on your emulator oh so th- those games that you could actually uh insert your game boy uh yeah save into you just insert the cartridge it would download your save and you would play yep. pokemon arena uh, uh on Col- the game Col- coliseum Coliseum, Coliseum, but it yes. actually <laughs> but it also actually let you play like ruby sapphire emerald in on your gamecube as well Yes, <laughs> that's pretty. Neat. And hey, we're all big fans of even if you don't play around with the emulators, uh, be glad that they exist for game preservation because these systems are getting older, man. How old is a GameCube now? Think about it. You you like there, for, for Smash tournaments, there is a problem because years, there is almost a, 20 years there, old. <laughs> there's a specific revision <laughs> of the uh, of the GameCube controller people need for a very popular uh, fighting game technique in Smash that. Like they don't make those anymore. Mm. So there's, there's like a finite supply of this shit and like Wii's GameCube's, all this stuff. They're, they're not going to be a lot more common going forward. So, but yes, like, I'm definitely that. with you with the uh, Linux and M1 because like the, just mm. the speculation and slightly better than the speculation. Some of the rumors that have been going around, they're talking about what they're going to do with the, you know, not cheese greater Mac pro. That's going to be mm. M whatever powered. And they're talking like, 20 or 40 computing cores, which, geez, that's like compared to whatever it has now, which is a fraction of that. But what, like for gaming and stuff like that, especially emulation, 64 to 128 processing cores, the M1, what we're seeing, that performance there has eight. Oh. I'm, it's, it's, it's a brave new world. It's like, I, I want to see some more crazy arm shit coming out. I'm, yeah. I am eyeing NVIDIA very expectantly because if anyone can pull something like that off, they have, they have the experience to actually do that. They do. And it's going to be $4,000 and not in stock yeah. until 2043. Yeah. I mean, it's something it'll cost about the You're same as the MacBook Nvidia Pro price. anyways. But hey, we get some new, uh, <laughs> new one of those TIs, TIES versions that you could buy now, but they're $5,000. So uh, great deal. Yeah. Great value. You can get them. They're in stack. <laughs> but yeah, no, all that talk about the um, AR64 business, I'm like, okay. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is ARM64. Is there anything about like new stuff for the Pi? Maybe the um, Lib Retro Core for Dolphin now works on the Pi. No, Mm-mm. I mean it does. You can play uh, some uh, GameCube games, but don't even bother with the Wii games, <laughs> and you have to build it yourself because it doesn't come on uh, by default if you install Retro Pi. So, yeah, it's yeah no. No luck on that front. That unfortunately, Pedro, you should use your Raspberry <laughs> Pi four for a Stream Deck server like a normal person. <laughs> I use it for uh, gaming while I'm laying down on the couch. There usually, go. there you go. Uh, SDL two has done some weird. They do. Weird. Uh, uh, Iculus about five days ago. Uh, he's been working on the SDL one point two compat thing that allows SDL one point two games to use SDL two effectively. Uh, it just does that little translation to the new stuff. And this one, well, this is the CD ROM implemented fake CD ROM support. And what it is is you make a directory of MP three files uh, look like a CD drive. So that games which are expecting the disc to be on the drive to be able to read, you know, tracks two through however many other tracks there happen to be on the soundtrack, because track one was always data. Uh, so yeah, you just dump the uh, the MP3s there, and there you go. There's your music for your game. Uh, no, yeah, it's no, you example. peasant, you sell out. <laughs> Rohit brings up an excellent point. Why is it not Og the Standard that no one ever adopted. I, that I everyone mean, claims you, that they want to use, but they never do. No, MP3 is well, I mean, I mean like, here, here's MP3 the thing: like the, <laughs> this, this could easily be adapted adapted to any sort of file format. Yeah, you can do it but, wrong. Like, yeah, yeah. No, you gotta you gotta support FLAC only. Uh, but like, yeah, this, it, 
the, this sort of thing makes a lot of sense right now because once upon a time storage was a constraint. You didn't want to, you maybe didn't want to keep the entire soundtrack on your two gigabyte hard drive. So you'd keep it on the, the CD ROM drive. Now you can get a two terabyte drive for about the same as a Snickers bar. So yeah, uh, for a lot of older games, no loopback file system nonsense. Just here's a directory. It's like a brilliant thing, man. I mean, it makes sense. I, I was thinking about it because uh, like, especially with id titles you're effectively you're buying a soundtrack that includes a free game and you know that goes all the way back to like quake one that is a infinitely better experience with all the quake games with that cd drive and we we had this thought experiment last night when was a cd rom installed on your system that's working you got one <laughs> I ha- I have one in the box, but it's not doesn't actually count. connected nope, to anything. Doesn't count. That yeah. poser. Yeah, I've... three desktops, three laptops, desktops. <laughs> the the, no, the, fi- the five and a quarter the blue... disk drive. <laughs> yeah, I have the little blue USB one. Nope, nope doesn't count. Doesn't count. Okay, so uh, th- I have four within the hand's reach, and none of them count. Okay, <laughs> all of mine. I went looking um, this afternoon, and I found a DVD and uh, one. It was like a CD, but but they're like ATA. Man, I don't have a- anything with ATA on it anymore. That's that's what AliExpress is for. No, not really. Yeah. I don't. Get, I, I get negative fucks. <laughs> that I've turned away on my disc. So. This is something we are not allowed to use <laughs> ever. Uh, I mean, we're probably still allowed to use it nope. until we use it the very first yes, time. You see, there, there's At a which cause point and we will not be allowed to use it ever it's, it's, again. It's, it's like it's like nuclear war. You can launch the you can launch the one nuke and only the this, one nuke. The, yeah, this don't no. <laughs> yeah, no. This is the VTuber webcam. Uh, it is. A Linux application, which allows you uh, to become a VTuber. Well, to create your or import your own 3D model. Hang on. Uh, No, uh, I I got it. We got to go and throw this down because the first time I heard people talking about VTubers, I was thinking, oh, is that like a new style thing that they're doing? And then I eventually went and Googled it. And I'm like, oh, you're doing that? Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's, it's for people who really want to become an anime. Okay. <laughs> and throw heavy amounts of voice processing and uh, not have people complain that the voice is out of sync with the video because hey you're uh, rendering an entire 3d model in this case in panda 3d uh to uh mimic the actions of your head hands and uh, face that that's it uh no full body tracking which is disappointing probably for the best and yeah it's because it's, it's using the uh, leap motion <laughs> sdk so you need the leap, leap cube in place to track the movement yep. and the uh one thing that i jumped out at me oh yeah it tracks your dual shock four mm-hmm. so if you have a dual ah. shock four while you're v-tubing it'll track that too <laughs> Play, play with us, mommy, forever and ever and ever. Uh, I mean, see, my brain's already going to like incredibly dark, dark, dark places. Uh, and I, there's, I, I look yes, forward. Um, I, I look forward. Uh, to like the, the porny streamers Is there no that are also this? VTubers. The comments are just, <laughs> no, some no. comments. This is, yeah, that figures. Uh, that yeah, that yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to the uh, whatever. Fuck it. It's not open source. Fuck it. It's not yep. open source, so yet, don't use it. Yet. It's not. They, it they, 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 they do say they do say yet in the one comment there, but I, I look forward to the well, incoming I mean, 2D sexy yeah. tux nightmare fuel. It's just sexy no, penguins. You put them in the show sexy notes. big titty penguins. Nope, I am not searching yes. for sexualized penguins. No sir. <laughs> the re- uh, the rest <laughs> of you can though. I Congrats. refuse. Uh, and and again, I mean, if you're going to continue developing this, you need to get something that people are going to be able to relate to as like your virtual avatar. So uh, toss somebody a man bear pig. All right. Something for the kids. I, I, I want like George Washington from the Washington video. Also possibly a mongoose <laughs> dog. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> But you know what? We, we gotta go. We gotta go back in time to the to the to the long, long ago past of 1999, where people who were playing video games on Mac were actually catered to by software companies. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is uh, this is a open source implementation of uh, Bugdom. It's a uh, it's an exploration platformer thing. It's developed by Pangea Software originally. This guy uh, Jorio 
he has uh, he's gotten the OK to make a uh, updated version of it. Uh, it's using it's using a uh, reimplementation of uh, Carbon called Pum. Carbon was the framework that let like legacy Mac OS seven to nine apps run on OS ten. So it's it's essentially like a like an old Mac wine. Uh, this is working now. So it's if if you if you want to have a blast of the past because you were on a Macintosh way back when in the late nineties. <laughs> That's a, what, do you, what do we think about the cheats? Uh, tilde plus F1. All right. I don't think anybody would stumble across that one thing. Yeah, that's nah. the acute <laughs> accent. You know, what the I, fuck I, I mean, meant. like that, that's the quick console <laughs> button is what it is. Hold down F2 <laughs> and press space to show the save and load screens. Uh, number keys. So a lot of F keys. All right. Yeah. But here's my favorite thing about that. I did, I've never heard of this game. Never heard of that. But I know somebody listening or watching going, oh, <gasps> That was my jam oh, growing God. up. That was the only game we fucking had. And, um, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> which is a shame because you didn't get the best title from them. No, you didn't. Because they also released Nanosaur, a source port. That's right. Uh, do, you, do you want a raptor with guns? Because they fucking didn't yes. uh, <laughs> He's got a real Time gun. traveling. <laughs> yeah. Check this out. I, I, had to, I had to look this up. This, this is the plot. This is legitimately the plot. You're a cybernetic dinosaur from the future who's sent back in time 20 minutes before a giant asteroid hits the Earth because the 90s plots, man, for video games. Um, you, you didn't need one. You, I, I love the... It's like, fuck it. It's 3D. They'll buy it. and Which was also true. Uh, I... I I am kind of tempted. Apparently, this was received well enough to justify making a sequel. I don't know. I didn't make a... <laughs> How, how, do, how do you follow that up? Right, yeah. like we get we we gave the dinosaur two real guns. Oh, well, now he has <laughs> more time. We'll set back forty minutes before yeah. the impact. I, I don't know. I'm happy to see stuff like this again. Just even if it's just for game preservation. Yeah. So yeah, this, yeah. This, this is also Elias by uh, that. That yeah. is a name to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess if we're like going to see old, uh, ports of like a lot of old Mac games, this is kind of the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And to be fair, I have no idea what Mac gaming looks like at all, aside from like Marathon, because that's that was like the most high profile Mac game here. So today I learned about two different Macintosh games coming up next. Something that could potentially run on your old Macintosh mm -hmm. throwing chairs at some blade. Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week, we're taking a look at Sunblaze, developed by games from Earth on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 15 bucks. What is it? Lee Josie in her retired superhero dad's training simulator. But beware, the training room might go rogue and keep you inside. Dot, dot, dot. Sunblaze is a brain twisting precision platform with hundreds of challenging handcrafted levels to keep you dying for hours and hours. So we got to thank uh, the publisher Bonus Stage for uh, sending us some keys. And <laughs> smash. I guess let's let's get into it then. <laughs> All right. So uh, I like this type of game. I just do, man. I'm over here. I'm running on Debian 11, a Threadripper 1920X, a little 2060. Yeah, it's a pixel platform. You could be able to do it. So yeah, you as you might imagine, it's no problem. V syncing at 60, at 1080, 2160. It'll do it all day long. Good to see. You do get full screen with the uh, selectable resolutions. That's good. Windowed mode. I ran into a bug that Pedro Jordan didn't experience. If I go into window mode, it just goes like 1440p and I'm not able to resize it. Big deal, whatever. That's fine. Rebindable controls. I like to see that. That is present. And check out the audio options on Brad. There's a EQ built into the audio section that you can play around with, which I can only hope was like some drag out fight with uh, whoever did the soundtrack and the game developers. Like, I don't like this mix. It's like, and that was the compromise. I want to I want to keep that dream. Now, audio-wise, it does make the retro beeps and boops, and it's accompanied by chiptune synth in the background. Nothing really terribly memorable, but let's talk about what the game is. Because basically, you're a kid that's being trained to do flying spaghetti monster knows what by your dad in a computer-controlled shape-shifting fuck room. Okay, that that's your plot. That's about all you get. Computer malfunctions and the wild and wacky adventure continues. But right from the jump, you have dad dropping some well crafted dad jokes. I'm going to say, in like the first three minutes, the game sold me. Well done. Well done. It's got a nice sense of humor to it. But 
Granted, if you're in your late 30s, early 40s, uh, some of those references, some of those dad jokes can make you feel a little bit old, man. It's like, oh, too close to home. But let's get right to it. Uh, since it needs to be addressed, is it fair to call Sunblaze Super Meat Boy meets Celeste? Well, I mean, it's fuck you, hard precision platformer. Fair. Fair. It has the buzz saws and that mechanic that turns you into the bouncy spirit light. Also fair. But outside of that, you get rooms. Kudos on that. Like, did you guys like that transition? I thought that was a nice way to do a, like go from level to level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, I thought that. Yep. Re- reconfigures <laughs> itself. If you're watching the video version, you'll see that you get rooms filled with assorted nonsense, like regular blocks, blocks that fall, blocks that stab, blocks that burn, blocks that explode, and the occasional drone to mix things up. Ooh. Then you have a showdown with one of those big fucking things from Axiom Verge at the end. And then a unicorn shows up the end it takes a little over like 1.5 hours to speed run so if you're like me you like this type of game but you find it extremely challenging and you want to keep so i'm i'm guessing i'm guesstimating i get like five plus hours out of this you know if you're just a peasant like myself but for 15 bucks it's not a bad deal if this is your jam if you like celeste i'm gonna say if you like celeste more and you like super meat boy go play this you'll have a good time with it and uh yeah, no problems with it technically. And three chairs. Look at that. Deal with it. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3464 bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti launches out of the box. Uh, it holds 60 frames a second, but I mean, it's pixels. And I mean, the pixels themselves are serviceable, but I mean, here's the thing I've seen a lot better pixel art in my day my day because I'm an old man now. <laughs> but like, this is, this is this is not to say that it's bad. It's just average pixels pixel art it's what you would expect from any given hipster pixel game uh that doesn't look like complete shit um you do have a windowed mode but it's a drag your own resolution the soundtrack is just kind of a kind of loopy pile of meh i turned it off after a while controls are good everything is rebindable if you're using steam input you just get the xbox prompts but apparently pedro will tell you otherwise um because he's not using steam input um <laughs> Yeah, uh, fun-wise, well, it's certainly a lot easier than Celeste. That's 100% sure. Um, Well, it certainly has the same sort of uh, screen-based design as its me-test predecessors. Uh, I think it tends more towards Meat Boy in terms of, like, the actual level design, especially in terms of some of the obstacles you're dealing with. Um, I also really like the the danger room get up. It's a fine, I definitely it's a get fun some little... type. I'm watching Pedro's video like you are right now, and like I, I I get some weird joy watching people go through the bullshit of sussing out these maps. <laughs> the learning, yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like, so here here's the, here's the thing. Like all of these games, it is a process of elimination of finding the exact right timing and button presses you need to actually complete the level. Um, and like. That's not what I'm a big fan of. I, I'm not a big fan of that gameplay. The the over and over repetition doesn't really do it for me. I think that's why I like roguelikes is because it's different every time. So I don't get like too hung up on a specific thing. Uh, also, I can appreciate stuffing someone in a death trap and subjecting them to dad jokes as not ad nauseum. That's pretty good. I'm, I'm a fan of this. I just know um, like watching this again. Sorry to chime in, but I'm yeah. waiting for Pedro to remember that he has a dash. There he goes. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah and, and part of it is like, I want to save the dash because I don't know when I'm going to need it and blah, blah, yes. blah. It, <laughs> that is it, the it, thing. It, it, <laughs> There, there's a whole there's a whole lot of like this game loves to like make you find the correct order of things to actually do because it'll be like here's an easy way but it's not going to get you far enough you need to go the long way around um so but here's here's the thing if you've played meat boy if you played celeste before this isn't breaking any new ground this is something you've played already and you know for if if you're someone who really likes this sort of game i can definitely see this being up your alley uh because it's well done uh, there's clearly a lot of thought put into the levels. The mechanics are solid. The controls are solid. Um, so yeah, it's not going to change your mind if you don't like platformers, but it's still a pretty damn good platformer on its own. I'll say two chairs. Yeah, it's, uh, well, if you've played Celeste, you know what to expect, but, uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X, uh, with the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. Uh, I, don't think I've ever seen a game which specifically said it failed to V-Sync. There are a lot of games that failed to V-Sync. Uh, FNA is actually one of the worst offenders in that respect. Uh, but this one specifically tells you, failed to V-Sync. Oh, okay. All right, so firms are capped at 60, so no 144 for anyone. But um, the dual sense. Work that out of the box without needing Steam input. So that was nice to see. Very good Unity actually updating the... Um, 
controllery bits very very much appreciated how, how, how the, much you want to bet this is rewired though these guys didn't do anything probably yeah <laughs> because we know that that one works and sdl2 already supports um the dual set, so yeah, most likely. And yeah, the graphics, well, you can see them, they're hipster pixel platforms. And the, mu- uh, the music bleep bloops are, they're very high energy, absolutely. Uh, you actually get the bump you in the uh, soundtrack. Alive as long as you did on that spring, man. Right. <laughs> oh, there's going to be more of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's impressive <laughs> but yeah no it took me a while to figure out the timing on how to do the dash across there while you're falling down but yeah the um yeah the music bleep loops very high energy but you can tell that the loop isn't particularly long uh so yeah they might start to grit after a while is it fun though well if we compare this to Celeste, which is inevitable because the developers and the publishers themselves are comparing this to Celeste, then I think Celeste would be my choice of a better game. The gameplay is very similar. The controls are just as responsive, even if a bit more limited in Sunblaze. There's no up dash and no wall climbing, but the main difference is the story. Because in Celeste, there was out. an actual... Hey? They, they chew you out for expecting wall climbing. They're like... Can I walk on? Yes. What do you think this is? Some video game? <laughs> You've been playing too many video games. <laughs> yeah, no, the, um, there's no wall climbing, but it, it, the story in Celeste was very much its own thing. That was like the story of Celeste, uh, of protagonist person with your name going up Mount Celeste. So yeah, it was, that was the general motivation as to why you were doing what you were doing here. Well, yes, you do have the dad jokes, but uh, the story itself seems more of an afterthought. It's like, let's just have a story so that people don't just say, what's the motivation? Why is the character doing this? Uh, that kind of situation. Then again, you know, it feels weird to, to be complaining about this because I'm the one who says that in video games, a story is always secondary to the mechanics and the general interactivity element. I can get a good story in a book or the TV show or a movie or whatever, but interactivity you can only get out of a video game. And in that respect, Sunblaze delivers exactly what I would expect. Uh, unfortunately, Celeste gave me that and more. And a wider range of movements and, you know, uh, level design, the amount uh, of fuckery in the Celeste level design was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. It was it, it was a hipster pixel platformer that I didn't hate, which was mm. <laughs> I guess that's saying something. But yeah, no. Um, Sunblaze what were you gets. Saying? Two very, very solid um, lawn chairs. All right. Well, there. I think I think we've talked this to death. We got anything else we want to add on to this I think before it's we go? An incredibly well done game. I mean, for the price, if this is your gem, and plus you you get to play as you know a spunky kid that's like slamming vodka through the entire. Um, oh, <laughs> lo, lo, def, definitely looking at the menu at work. They 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 uh, they get, they made her quite curvaceous. Like well, this is. Sexy Celeste. I was oh yeah, so, like so, um, <laughs> Mega Man vibe from it. Oh yeah, from from the actual pixel art for sure. But like the actual like uh, in menu art of like the, you, you know you know how in the old like American release of Mega Man they had like buff manly Mega Man. Rock Man. They, yeah. 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 They, they they got this except it's like a sexy girl in spandex now. All right. Yes. All right. Well, coming up next, sexy Pedro in spandex. I'm just kidding. We're doing hate mill. I'm not going to break in the song. I don't care Bippity what you bye. say. Dude, fuck you. <laughs> Everything's better already... downwards wetter. Uh, in the in-betweeny bits, uh, I did break into song, and apparently it was the wrong song because I confused Puzzle Bubble with Bobble Bobble. Bibble. So, uh, yeah. To, to your credit, <laughs> I, I made the exact same mistake. <laughs> multiple times in my life it's a widespread thing now (laughs) but yes if you'd like to let me know exactly uh in onomatopoeia form what the uh tune for um bubble bubble is like you can absolutely do that just go to lilyscapecast.com and hit the contact button there is a form you gotta fill pick lgc weekly mail and yes it is uh 
There's some caveats above the form. If you want to send us some keys to play your game, please read them. If you want to send us a link for to advertise for something, read, please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that requires my eye meat, and I don't want that. They hurt. Hey, we love our feedback. Drop us a line if you want. You can leave a comment on our Patreon post or a YouTube comment, but no promises on that. We'll try it. Man, okay, check this out. I refuse to like acknowledge this in text form, but Jordan and I went through a multi-week series where we finished uh, Doom 3 and Coop. Mm-hmm. Like, first line... It was a Fedora and Debian uh, get their asses tomorrow uh, using uh, LibreCoop with uh, Doom 3. First thing you read, YouTube comment on our final episode that I noticed uh, when I got home this afternoon was, so how are you running this and on what distros? I guess uh, every I'm, episode is someone's first episode, right? <laughs> I, I, yep. It, I mean, it's it's true. That's like the Stan Lee mantra. Every comic book is someone's first yes, comic book. Yes, but it is the first sentence in the description. Provides all of that information with hashtags on IO Quick. Reading is Doom. hard. You should have included hieroglyphics. <laughs> so typing. Typing takes more energy than reading. <laughs> Can you translate that into emoji? No. <laughs> no, no, just like straight up ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Send them a picture of a stork or a oh, jackal man. or some shit. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about precision platformers. I'm glad I held on to this. This showed up last week, as you might believe. This is from Matthew C. And he writes, last week's episode where you reviewed Sunblaze. We didn't review it. We just talked about it. But we reviewed it this week. You said you wanted a name from for the, the ultra hard precision platformer genre. How about... Kaizo platformers. Is that it? Kaizo? Yeah, Kaizo. All right. After yeah. the infamous Kaizo Mero Rumhex? Mario. 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 <laughs> Mar- yeah, Bone Mero. You know, you know what? To to this guy's credit, to Math to Matt C's credit, that's a fair that's a fair assessment. Yeah, Kaizo was kind of like the first big fan mod that uh uh, amalgamated a lot of like these super hard custom ROM hack Mario levels into something that you could actually play the entire way through. So yeah, Ka- Ka- Kaizo like is probably good. I like meat test just because it has the word meat in it. But that's just- <laughs> I don't know. I'm learning about um, Kaizo Mario world. Uh, yeah. There's all, also the uh, rage platformers, which all the YouTubers. Uh, yeah. I, get, like I, I want to be the guy milk. and stuff. <laughs> That's useful. It, it, it's Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's all like that precision, like hyper precise Mario shit where like you throw the yep. shell and then you hit the button and then you bounce off that and you catch the shell and you can like do that. You oh. need to do that shit constantly to, so to get through these it, levels. it's like OG Mario Maker. Yes. Yeah, it was Mario Maker. It was the inspiration for Mario Maker. <laughs> it was I, Nintendo I, I think, admitting think, defeat. It's like, okay, fine. You do it. All right. Yeah. I, I, it was Nintendo going, oh, we could, we could make money off that. I really want to see, just a random aside, I want to see like Zelda, uh, Zelda Maker, like an OG, like NES Zelda. Uh, but game like, Maker? The, or um, RPG Maker sh- specifically? Well, here's, the, uh, here's one thing that I enjoy watching is um, when they do it, like awesome games done quicker, speed run, whatever. Mm-hmm. They do the, like when you brought up Zeldas, they do the randomizers. Mm-hmm. Which is entertaining to watch, but who remembers the? This is an old school internet YouTube video of uh, it was a Mario One ROM hack. It had the guy because he might, it was probably clicked something your brain meets. He starts going, "Do my push ups, I'm doing my push ups, Mario, I'm doing the push ups." Then he runs, and it was one of those fuck you levels where the blocks were hidden in like obvious oh, jump yeah. levels. You know, just the old school rage stuff. We're talking four by three type shit. But hey, man. It, in, incident, incidentally, the invisible like rage block, the the parlance now calls them Kaizo blocks. Oh, yeah, that's pretty neat. And hey, we got a uh, the emulator on Steam. We were talking about that last week, so it'd be pretty mm-hmm. easy to uh, get that loaded up. Indeed, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. All right. Up next, we have one about the Atari VCS from Sean Del R, and they say. I care and interested in the Atari PCS <laughs> because I love everything they're doing. I'm going to stay positive about it. That's just my opinion. I respect your honest opinion. Okay. Jordan, well, I guess, you're I guess, putting periods where there were none. <laughs> that's true. This is zero punctuation. <laughs> yes. No, there is exactly well, I, I, one period. I mean, pa- pa- 
Pe- what? Pedro would like to pretend that this is zero punctuation. I would like to imagine but... that that was on accident. <laughs> yes. I, I had to it pause probably, and breathe. Like, force of habit, stop typing something, put a period at the end. Well, we were talking about that yeah. last week, and uh, we, had, we had a couple comments on the uh, YouTube video, and I wanted to throw this one in because we're obviously, the three of us, were excited or at least mildly interested in the hardware. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not to play any no. Atari games, just the, you know, the PCB with that, the Ryzen embedded. And I think some people took issue with it. <laughs> that thing would be treated like a laptop, new laptop. Step one, wipe the windows or just wipe whatever's yep. on it and we're going to uninstall whatever we're going to put on it. What I, I guess, man, are people, are you genuinely excited about new Atari titles that are going to be coming to the Missile missile Command Remastered? Like, yeah, Yeah. I don't, to to me, if you can play on the, um, but the like the, this has like the internet shi- archive <laughs> shiny updated graphic i don't know there, there's definitely i don't i can definitely see some people really wanting like nicer looking versions of like old retro games because let's be real the old versions looked like shit the technology was shit but, but we've progressed since the, then. well the technology it was a marvel that they were able to make games with that uh, oh yeah yeah i think the real question is are you willing to spend 300 bucks for that though I'm willing to th- spend three hundred dollars on that hardware yes. for the new laptop thing, but that that's kind that's kind of I think where we all stand. None of us mm-hmm. are interested in like the actual product itself. So each of them, and listen, you don't have to worry about us hogging your VCSs. We'll buy them from no. you on eBay next year. Yeah, or so, yeah. or the yeah. when or you the lose scalpers. interest in them, we'll. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I I am looking forward to the new form of Atari based cryptocurrency that you can only mine on VCSs. <laughs> <That's-> <sighs> don't just know <laughs> i kind of want to see all those ryzen uh embedded that the uh the smock was supposed to use that are now you know lying the, in a the, shelf the, somewhere the, that that will be repurposed <laughs> into atari vcs it'll be like that yes it'll be like the jaguar um shelf yeah, that was used for like some office <laughs> equipment or something like that man Oh man! So nobody bogart bar- bar- your VCSs. Uh, there'll, there'll be plenty to go around. But on that bombshell, we're gonna cue the music. You can always find us around. When do we go live now? Eight thirty Eastern Standard Moon Time. That yes. sort of that sounds about right. I yes. guess. Yes. Now we're before. What that, time is it? We're kicking off on Twitch for our patrons. Come hop in, say hi. We do the pre pre super shows, and it's kind of brilliant. It is a thing. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter or. Uh, no, yes, at Vin on mass.linuxteamcast.com. I'm Jordan Spung. I'm stealing all your Atari VCSs. Nom, 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 nom. Give them to me. I consume VCS. Uh, you can feed my hunger at The Burning Fool on Twitter or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Yeah, uh, I, sorry. I, I was actually imagining what I could put the VCS. Um, in your butt. Yes, in your you mouth. Know. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> probably in my mouth I do have a kind of a big mouth and I do tend to talk out of my ass ironically enough if you'd like to see more of that go to at unaccounted for on twitter which is uh, where you can find me talking out of my ass all the time not really but occasionally <laughs> well that's the only thing we learned uh, we were further informed about Pedro's magical bum <laughs> that's the show title <laughs> It's magical, all right. Everything but the stench. It's magical. Oh, man. What are you talking about? Good. It smells amazing. You would say that when you. Nice. Everyone likes their own brand. Flexible. Yeah. Well, we, we got we to thank our lovely patrons, our advisors, Omegas, and our Theron, and our executive producers, the, executive the producers. diehard. The executive producers, Aldius, Barb Ram, Scott Michonne, Mr. Fox Dog, Tom McCast, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, and Holy Toast, our lone little Nikki fan, Darkwing, rocking it out with uh, Rodney Dangerfield in hell. Oh man, it's <laughs> the ghost of the fuckwall Jack, past. Renault, Ryder X, Machina, Trudgy, Vertanuda, Justin, Frostgloid, Kylitix, with the Death Notes, Nova K, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Rene, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashly G, uh, sorry, Simcha, uh, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, uh, Stephen, and Dirty Dean. Always the Dirty Dean. We got Noel, we got Joel, we got Stephen again. 
again, Mr. Amis, different Steven. We got a couple of Stevens along with Douglas. Uh, yes. Another Steve B. <laughs> Steve E. Frieza. How, How many, many have people Steve named Steve? H? Man, we, we are... A, <laughs> We are flush with Steve's. Of Steve's. Yes. We have a Steve surplus. Yes. A surplus. Also, you would Steve. be frighteningly Steve. surprised how long it took to make such a shitty force ghost in Gimp. And it's n- not easy. It, nope. It's not easy being a skeleton. Or transparent and blue. But you know what? He's hanging out with old Ben Kenobi now. Dying and love you. Bye. Bye. Five dudes.